Do you need a weapons mounted light? Or do you need a handheld flashlight? Or maybe both? But which should be your priority? Let's find out. I'm Riley Schrader with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I help new and veteran shooters get and improve their defensive shooting skills by teaching the art, science, and laws of self-defense, whether guns are involved or not. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the DFI channel and click the notification bell to stay current on the Defensive Firearms Instruction videos. Stay with me to the end of this video for my white light recommendations. Today we're going to talk about lights on guns, specifically what kind you need on what types of guns and what you don't need. I'm going to talk mainly about the principles of illumination and point out some differences that you might like to know. We're going to go deeper than just the name brand recognition, but I'll leave the really nerdy stuff to the flashlight engineers. We're not going to talk about the specific flashlight techniques in this video, but look for my video about low light shooting. One of the first things that the forward-thinking defensive gun owner likes to acquire is a tactical flashlight. This is especially true if they realize that they very well be needing to use their defensive firearm in a low-light situation to illuminate and identify potential targets. And then they get a weapons-mounted light, and then they think they need a laser, and then they think it needs to be a green laser. To make matters worse, often, New gun owners will discount or ignore the illumination and identification component of target acquisition and jump straight into the sexy lasers. Pretty soon they almost have as much invested in the illumination and targeting system as they do in their defensive firearm. This isn't wrong all by itself, but it does depend on your work environment. You need to know and understand what your priorities are and what you're trying to accomplish with your light in the first place. Clients will come to me and ask, what kind of light should I put on my handgun? My answer is almost always, what handheld flashlight are you using now? And then they'll tell me that they only want a weapons mounted light for their nightstand gun. That's when I give them a short explanation about the lights on guns. Your weapons mounted light is not a general purpose flashlight that happens to have a gun on it. You have a gun in your hand that happens to have a light attached to it. The operative phrase here is, you have a gun in your hand. You should not be using only your weapons mounted light to search and identify potential targets simply because you are in fact searching with the muzzle of a loaded gun pointed at everything in your search path. You should be searching with your handheld flashlight using that light to find and identify the subject of your interest and then if that subject needs to have a gun pointed at it, utilize your weapons mounted flashlight for continued illumination and solving the rest of that problem as indicated. On the subject of long guns, rifles and shotguns, mounted lights become important because you're usually uh, using both hands to control your rifle or shotgun. There are techniques to utilize a handheld flashlight with a long gun, but they're definitely not preferred if you have the option of acquiring and using a weapons mounted light for your rifle or shotgun. However, you still should only be searching with your handheld flashlight. If you locate a subject that needs a gun pointed at it, then use your weapons mounted light. What about lasers? My two cents is that they are very specialized tools that have a very narrow application both in circumstances and in skill set. Remember, a laser does not illuminate or assist the unaided human eye in identifying a target. Yes, infrared lasers are exceptionally good at target acquisition using night observation devices, but their use is in an even narrower application. For most of us, white light to find and identify a potential target will be the workhorse of tactical illumination. The general priority of acquiring illumination equipment for your firearms is this. First, a handheld, tactically designed flashlight. Second, a redundant flashlight that's very similar, if not identical, to the first light. The value of equipment redundancy cannot be overstated. And finally, after you've acquired some basic skills in the low light shooting through formal training, then consider a weapons mounted flashlight. Keep in mind, though, that your primary searchlight will still be your handheld flashlight. 
Now, for my general recommendations. In your daily travels, you'll use your medium-sized, heavy-duty handheld flashlight much more than you'll use your gun or your knife for your pepper spray. A palm-sized flashlight with a tactical tail switch is going to be good to carry with you all the time. They're bright enough and durable enough to allow you to light up the dark shadows between cars and parking lots or other spaces where danger lurks. This is another category of your equipment that you shouldn't cheap out on. The bargain flashlights at box stores are good for general illumination tasks around the house and certainly may be pressed into emergency or field expedient service, but your primary tactical flashlight designed for that purpose will be a better choice. The output should be in the 120 lumens or greater category. If you're considering a rechargeable light, be sure that the light has the capability of using non-rechargeable batteries as well. Otherwise, your battery will likely run out when you need it the most, and you'll either have to have another rechargeable battery on hand or wait for an extended period of time for your battery to recharge. The Streamlight brand of rechargeable tactical lights allows you the sustainability of using a rechargeable battery along with the convenience of replacing the rechargeable battery with standard batteries as needed. Be sure to have at least two extra sets of batteries on hand in the same room or the same space that you're in. Better yet, have them in your, extra, in your everyday carry bag. As for my recommendations on weapons mounted lights, I should probably do a separate video just on that alone, but here's a quick take. Both the Streamlight and Surefire brands offer excellent weapons mounted lights for both handguns and long guns. The most notable difference between the two are going to be the switching systems. Both brands are quite durable and you'll be well served with either. Remember though, that being quite familiar with your equipment and pressure testing it along with your other skills will be the most important of all. So there you have my short take on handheld and weapons mounted white lights. What are you using for your illumination equipment? Let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Remember to click the subscribe and notification buttons to stay updated on all the defensive firearms instruction videos. And please share this video and channel with people in your tribe to help educate them too. To schedule your personal firearms training session with me or to set up your own personal firearms training program, contact me through the website. The link is in the description below. I'm Riley Schrader. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time with more defensive firearms instruction.